The Hall of Famer, Michael Irvin, joins us on 95.7 The Game for his Monday conversation. We always appreciate it. Michael, thank you so much for stopping on by. How you doing, man? Man, I'm doing great, guys. How, how are you guys, man? We're getting ready. I Get ready for that game, ain't it? <laughs> Absolutely. We are sitting right behind a big glass wall out in front of it. We got a lot of fans. They're drinking. They're partying. They're eating well. They're tailgating. And so we got the atmosphere here tonight. And look, the Niners need all the home atmosphere they can get, Michael. They do not want to be in last place four weeks into their year. They win tonight. Everybody in this division is 2-2. Two and two. They lose tonight. Everyone's 2-2 two and two except them. They're 1-3. and three. Right, and you talked about it, man. You know, I, I was thinking about that. I got a, a my godson goes to TCU, playing plays for TCU, right? And they're playing Oklahoma, and and, and he, again, right here, TCU, and TCU beat them again. Yeah, they did it before. You know what I mean? And I was like, man, it's just the atmosphere when you come in, and these guys expect to win here. It changes the atmosphere. That's the atmosphere you should have tonight. Right where you are, you've had great success against this team. And in in that atmosphere, just like you say, the number one thing and the number two things that I, I most count on when I'm starting to measure who's going to win a game is, okay, tell me, tell, tell me uh, the atmosphere and, and, and then tell me, tell me, tell me how badly a team needs this. Give me the matchup. Give me how badly a team needs it. If you can get to... Matthew Stafford with your front four, which you have, which you did, which Buffalo did. That's how they won that first game. Then, then you got a shot at getting Matthew Stafford to give you some, uh, give you an interception because he's given up five this season. So, so it's the atmosphere, man. This is a great matchup. This is a great matchup, and you have to be desperate because that matters too. And San Fran, like you said, should be desperate to make sure they all tie this thing up. And, Michael, the Rams come in, as good as they are offensively, they've kind of become one-dimensional. The The offense is basically get the ball to Cooper Cup right now, who sees 35% of Stafford's passes in this offense right now. He is probably more important to his team than maybe any other wide receiver in the league. Don't you think? W when you watch Cooper Cup play, right. what makes him so successful? Right, right. And you know what's so funny? See, I've, I've been looking at this, man, because, you know, and I'm going to give you a whole tale of this. The whole tale. When I even say it, I'm picking Kirk Cousins as my MVP. Everybody say, oh, you crazy. What was wrong with you, Michael? You must be doing You know, okay, but it was because of the conversations I've had with Justin Jefferson and the kind of year he's expected to have. And because he was going to be in that same place that Cooper Cup is in, that same place, the same position, running around, moving around, doing everything. And they move them around so much, I say it's so difficult to stop them. It's so difficult to stop them. So I've been breaking down the difference between Cup and, and Jefferson. But, man, but, but, and, and I always say Sean McVay won't let you take Cooper Cup out. But, but, but they did. Yeah, Arizona kind of, you know, they got him out of there. They, they took him out. You know, so, so things are changing. Things are changing. And that's why I, that's why, that's why I go back to and say, that's why I picked uh, Kirk Cousins. As an MVP. And, and even studying these two, I'm trying to, what I'm looking at now is, maybe it's because, one, who, who's best at getting off the jam? You know, and, 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 and Justin Jefferson gets jammed way more than Cup. For some reason, Cup is rarely jammed at the line of scrimmage. And, I, and, and that's what I'm working through. That's all the best part I got on it right now. I'm still working on it. So I can't give it all to you. I got to still have to figure it out. But I'm telling you, and they make it difficult to get your hands on Cup. He, if he gets what I'm, what I'm basically saying, if he gets all those free releases, those free releases, then he can do damage. And and I think more teams should try to stop him from having those free releases. How much of that, and you would know this far better than anybody else we talk to, how much of that is the fact that he runs routes so well that cornerbacks are afraid to sort of jam him at the line because if they don't get their jam right, they can never get back to a place where he doesn't have a huge advantage on them. Well, I, 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 I understand. I, I don't know if I would say it's he runs routes so well because if you look at Cooper Cup, he's not, he's not a, a physical phenomenon. You know what I mean? It's not like, boy, when he cut, oh, he's the fastest thing out. The cut 
It's that he understands the game so well. And within that system, he has so many options that more likely there's not a right option for you to choose. It's just a, 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 a least uh, painful option. Because he, they, they give him so many ways to break on so many routes and such an understanding. It's not like it's really a, a, a fair matchup, to be honest with you. And his understanding of the game, it, it just takes it over the, over the top. Now, now, and I'm, I, this is what I'm talking about. I'm studying. I'm learning. So Justin Jefferson, who has probably a better physical skill set than Cooper Cup, but probably less of an understanding of the game like Cooper Cup. You see what I'm saying? And he needs more time to understand the game like Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup dad was a coach and it sat him down and understood all the game. But that's what makes him so effective and so difficult. You can never sleep on a coach's son, right? No, they're uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing... It goes to when I say it's, it's, it's great to know how to get open because that's a physical thing, but it's even better to know when exactly to be open because you understand the... the, 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 the progress in the play and now i don't have to beat a guy early if the quarterback's not ready to throw to me he's a master at that um the other thing that people who watch the rams have noticed is that alan robinson has not yet been much of a factor i know i i, I know you were going here and that's basically what we were saying when we became when he became the one the one the, the, the one team that, that, that you rely so much on the receivers and and I, I, I was wondering about this, but I put it on Sean McVay to take care of it. Because Allen Robinson is, is, a, is a, I always say he's more like me because he's a big timing dude. He, he's better when he's in a timing offense. I'm dropping back four steps. I'm dropping back three steps. I'm letting this ball go. Go up and get it. I need you to be here when he go, when, when, when I let this ball go and go up and get it. A bang eight, a nine, a five route, 15 back to, uh, 17 back to 15. A deep end at 18, rolling up to 20. I need you to be right here at the top of the numbers. It's all time. But this is not just the timing offense. This is a more schematic offense and a read offense. So you're not just using your physical skill set to go to a position and dominate the ball. You got to read all of this out to decide where to go. And sometimes I see frustration in Allen Robinson in this system because it's not maximized, and I think – his great skill set. Michael, what, what, I, what I, was, I just want to follow up real quick. What I was going to ask is how much of his start is because Stafford has fallen in love with the reliability of Cup to the point where maybe he doesn't look for Robinson enough. Right, but but it, 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 it's... You, you get a big target like Allen Robinson, you, you're going to try to give him some opportunities even if you're Matthew Stafford. Now, here's the issue. If I'm trying to give him those opportunities and he ended up in interceptions, you know, whatever, then 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 I'm going to be wanting to throw and give those opportunities to him less. There's no doubt he's in love with with, with Cooper Cup, but but I, there's no doubt I think he will really want to get uh, uh, Allen Robinson more involved, more involved. But I think Allen is thinking the game and not just playing the game right now. And, and and a lot of times when you're thinking the game and not playing the game, you, you just get frustrated because it always seems like you're a kick behind and, and, and you're hearing the whispers that people are saying, oh, maybe you don't fit and you don't play or you're not the same receiver. Michael Irvin, the Hall of Famer here on 95.7 The Game. So Debo Samuel has more rushing attempts than he's got receptions this year, Michael. And this team's entire receiving core has only two receiving touchdowns on the year so far. And one could even argue that Brandon Ayuk shouldn't have stood in Denver because there was an illegal pick on it. Um, do you, in your mind, really still see Debo as a number one wide receiver in this league? Or is he more properly billed as the number one gadget player in this league? No, no, uh, he's the number one wide receiver. Now, now the question doesn't rely in the lay on him. You know, it's so funny. I was watching, right? I was watching the Packers uh, Patriots game on one TV, and on another TV, I was watching the Raiders 
and, and, and the Raiders play in Broncos game on other team. And I was watching Aaron Rodgers make perfect throw and, and, and the Packers receiver drop him. And I was watching Devontae Adams get open with just a little hole, just a little, just a little spot that Aaron Rodgers used to drop that ball and, and Derek Carr was a fake throw. And I said, wow, I bet those two miss each other. <laughs> I bet they regret that they are not together because that was a, a quite a view. You, he's a number one receiver. But he has to right now, and that's why I thought it was smart for him, honestly, as a businessman, and I ain't talking about a businessman, I'm talking about a whole business, Paul, man. Man. <laughs> right. I'm talking about <laughs> to go in and say, let's do my deal now. Because you're asking me to be a part of this quarterback transition that you are working on. And my production may drop. And people like people may be saying that I ain't quite the receiver. I want to make sure I have my comfort while you're working through that process and you don't sit here and try to mark me. That's why it was smart for him to go get it. He's the number one receiver, but it's going to take something through this process. Now, the game tonight, the, the game tonight, we should start getting back more to what he is. You should start because, hey, this this this. Let's just be real, guys. Let's stop the bull. This game right here, and it's so funny how this football works, you're not getting to where you're going to be in this game without facing every demon or, or passing every class. I don't care how you want to put it. And right here, all the things you said about Jimmy Garoppolo, all that he's gone through, he probably thought this was going to be an easy season, and now he's facing one of his greatest challenges. After last week game, you got this is the game. What are you going to look? What are you going to look like? Last week I can give you an excuse. All right, yeah, you, yeah, that's a quick turnaround. But right now, you got to face your demons. You've had great success against these te- against this team in the regular season. You haven't had so much success the last few years in prime time. Which one of your demons are going to win tonight? Which one of them are going to win? I shouldn't say demons because if the man, if the right one wins, it ain't a demon. It's your good man. If the right will win, you know, it's your, it's your good man. But which one of those will win tonight? And, and I'm looking at this game and saying, I, I'm expecting the second game back for Kittle, Kittle to make a great move. I'm expecting Garoppolo and Kittle to do something great in this game. You can get to them with the front four. You can play with Garoppolo and Kittle because they're going to need each other. It's not an overly throw. Jalen Ramsey will be over there on Debo, and, 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 and Garoppolo may be a little more afraid of that. Kittle has had great success against the Rams, more touchdowns against the Rams than any other team. I say this is how you go win this game. Well, I hope you're right, and I hope they can get Kittle out in some pass patterns and not need to leave him on the line of scrimmage to make up for an offensive line that is obviously going to be without Trent Williams tonight. But That's the I, worry right there, dude. That's the worry right there. Yeah. Trent it, Williams, man. And, and, and I'm not talking about just on the football field. I'm talking about to set, that, to set, the, to set the tone, to set the, to set the attitude, too. You know, yeah, you're going to miss his physical skill set, but, but more so to set the tone and set the attitude. When we lost, when we lost Big E, and we lost, we lost in that championship game to to, to the Forty Niners. That the, we lost that game because we didn't have Big E to set the tone and to set the attitude on that line. We didn't have Big E. He had a car accident, and and I'll never forget that. That's that. It, it, that's 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 what I worry about with Trey Woods. It's the attitude that you got to set. Michael Irvin here on Damon and Ratto. So, one more question about tonight's game before we bounce around week four with you just a little bit, Michael. Um, Do you think at all the league has caught up to Kyle Shanahan? Like, he sees his running game parroted around the NFL. His passing game isn't popping quite like it used to. How long can something extraordinary exist in this league before the league turns it into something that is ordinary? Well, that's, 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 that's a hell of a question now. What, what you're saying, since so many people are starting to copycat is run his system, is, is that what you're saying? Yeah, that it's not quite as unique as it used to be. You prepare for Kyle's <laughs> tendencies fight. week in and week out that's now. A, uh, right, right. And, and you know what? That's how this thing works, right? So now, so now, remember now, 
Now, everybody comes in with this system, and the system works. But then other people learn about it. And then they start getting to your system and, and with better players. Now, you didn't have to go get better players to run, to run your system. Because then it, ultimately what we're saying is it's going to come back down to players beating players. You know, and, and, and at some point, your system, if it starts spreading, and it is spreading, it is spreading, that more people uh, 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 get more adapt to it, understand it more, and everything. And that's the truth. But now, uh, I think Kyle is, is pretty much a master at, at his. Now, he's had some success against Sean McVay. So that means it's something he has or it's something. It's something. They've worked it with each other enough. It's something that he's holding. That, that he that he hadn't even talked to Sean McVay about that has helped him with his success. So let's see how this plays out. And looking at the Rams, though they they seem like a they seem like they're a half step step off right. from the team that we remember, particularly in in January. Are, do you see the same things, or are they as good as they've been? And if they're not as good as they've been, how much is that that it's too early in the season to know? No, 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 no. It, 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 they're a half step off, but, but but can you imagine why? Allow me to just share with you how that plays out. Every time you win a Super Bowl, anyway, in the any, any team was you got to worry about everybody getting all these little radio shows, everybody patting them on the back. Can you imagine how many times that must be multiplied out in L.A. The city of Hollywood. You know, <laughs> you sleepwalk through it all season with everybody patting you on the back. You you have to realize, and you hope it's not too late. Like, dude, man, we hey man, man we got to get back to it. And, and, and to some degree, some degree, I think that is what has happened in L.A. But also, you get a perfect storm of people together. You know, Von Miller is not in that locker room anymore. You you, you know, Odell Beckham had come over and had given them that given them that boost that they needed. So, you know what I mean? So, yeah, this is a different football team. This is a different football team. But they have that champion mentality, and they have that champion pride. They know they've done it before, and that's what they'll draw on. So it'll still be tough games. they will still be tough games. Michael Irvin here on 95.7 The Game. So concussion protocols have obviously been a, a huge topic this week. What is the one thing, Michael, the NFL can start doing better right now without an investigation, without conclusions, without a change in protocol, as a former player, what would you like to see the NFL doing right now to better enact some in-game player safety? Uh, the, I, I, can't, I can't even begin to tell you how unqualified I am to even speak to that. You know what I'm saying? Fair and, enough. And, here, and, and here, no, here's the reality and why I say that. Here's the reality and why I say that. I think we have absolutely uh, have been out of place and out of line with what I believe have been the the the, the, little, the little slight accusations we threw at Mike McDaniel with all that would happen with Tua. You know, it was like, okay, listen, what is in this man's history that will make you think he is? wanting to put some people, I uh, put this man in harm's way, where I saw him having to explain himself. Like, you know, uh, to me, two and I, we're very close. I said, well, you, you, why should you have to do that? You know, why? What, what did this man do for us to try to slyly point to or uh, point at him as if he's done something wrong? You got people that are way more qualified than him to make decisions on medical issue. They said that this that the kid was fine. You know, and, and and it was just wrong, I think, of us to try to act as if this guy, oh, this new coach who's come in and done a great job, done a super job over at Miami and, and grabbing these talented players and putting them in a position to win, all of a sudden you're gonna put a stain on his name like he's putting players at risk. I thought it came from places uh, of jealousy in the NFL. People even say stuff, and I call it hyperbole, to make that point more grand and to make him look even more worse by saying things like, well, I haven't seen anything like this in 40 years. It's like, hey, stop. We've only been doing this for 12. And in the old days, we would get hit. I got knocked out in a football game, stumbled, 
warm it over. They took me to the sideline, put smelling sauce up under my nose, <laughs> wake you up, and throw you back in the game. All of this was on TV, and it was less than 40, 40 years ago. So that's all I'm saying. I want everybody to be healthy. We want everybody to be healthy. I am not qualified, and a lot of us, we need to stop acting as if we are qualified, and we know when we see things. Let's let this. And, and if you want to do that, do that. But just make sure you're pointing your anger in the right place. And I thought going at Coach McDaniel, I thought that was unjust. That was not right. There's nothing in this man's history of his, char- or his character to say that he's that, he's that way. He's a young man. Teams and players are going to choose, though. I want to go play with them a lot. I don't want to get it on a rant. I just, I just want us to be careful with stuff like that. Um, I- ignoring the, where the blame for what happened should be pointed, uh, is there an intermediate solution to be found somewhere in maybe just having someone who isn't connected to the league or the Players Association or anybody else to be able to say, if that looks like it might be a head injury, he doesn't play for the rest of the game until he can get a full evaluation. Is is there a is there a value in that? Do you think that's plausible? There, there, there is a value in that, and I don't think anyone should should have a problem with that. You know, yes, and 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 that takes him off the hook. That takes him off the hook. He, he's a first year coach. We got we 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 all don't understand understand. And, and uh, nobody's saying that, 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 you know, any winning is more important. But as a first-year coach, your relationship and all that with your team matters. So you're, you're, you know what I mean? These guys are going to want to play. you got to try to monitor all of that. But your relationship moving forward matters. So, so you know, to act as if he can come in and just start like, doing whatever he wants to do and not worry about a relationship, you know, all of that. He's taking in to consideration. Yes, he's talking to his players. All of that moving forward matter. That's what great leaders do. Now, when it comes to the medical, the more experts we have to say, no, you can't play, take it out of the hands of those that are not experts, I'm all for that. I'm just not okay with an assassination of a man who had a sparkling character on something like this when, it, when, 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 we, should, when we got the people in place. When we have the people in place, and he's going by the information they gave him. Michael, you are a treasure each and every Monday. Thank you so very much. Next week, we'll get into exactly how many Cooper Rush jerseys you're ordering for family members this Christmas. Uh, But thank you very, very much for joining us. Always a pleasure to talk to you, sir. All right, guys. I pray, and guys, again, I apologize by going off about that, man. I just, you know. It's, no. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's what's right. It's this what's is- right. This is right. why we have you as a resource on this show, and we're thankful for it. Thank you, Michael. All right, buddy.